Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to a special edition of iHeartGeek. The Woo! ladies have taken over, you guys. Woo! Yeah, baby. <laughs> we need like so our little, our li I can't do the symbol. I don't have enough fingers to do the symbol. Not fingers to do it properly. That would <laughs> no. be offensive, so we won't do that. Okay. So as you guys can see, thank you for joining us, but as you can see, there's three ladies and no men's today. Woo! So we must be talking about a fun topic. We are. We're going to talk about the new version of The Witches that just came out. <laughs> I'm your host, Miss Geeky Page, and with me today is the lovely Satomi. Satomi, how are you today? I'm doing awesome. I'm so excited to hang out with my girls with a Z. And we've got our special guest, Miss Christina. We love it when you come on, on the show, Christina. How are you? I am good, and I, I love it. Yeah, I'm getting addicted. I'm having so much fun. We love having you on the show. It's a lot of fun. I'm really excited that there's no boys around today. Right? Yay! Yes, we're astrotastic today. <laughs> it also means we can't blame our humor on them. But... That's true. That's oh true. please, let's face it. You you know when girls get together, it's worse than a oh, locker room. Than and a men's we're proud room. of it. <laughs> Heck yeah. I think our listeners but, though are pretty prepared for the three of us in a room together without any male supervision. Buckle <laughs> I think up, the, Buttercup. Get ready, guys. Here we go. <laughs> so as I said, we're gonna be talking about it's a special movie edition. So we're gonna be talking about the newest remake of Raw dolls the witches that came out yesterday on hbo max um robert zemeckis was the director of this and you guys know who that is i don't even have to tell you and our good friend that we love here guillermo del toro was the screenwriter and has a lot of gear del toro touches throughout the oh yeah the Ooh. movie so first off let's let's just talk about how did we what did you guys think? How did you, did you like it? Did you not like it? Let's go from there. Some, Christina, what were your thoughts? I loved it. I loved it. And there were some moments that definitely just were cringeworthy, which is so del Toro, but yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, I watched it twice last night. So. Oh, nice. Nice. So tell me, how about you? I, I gotta be honest. I thought it was a vast improvement on the first one. Don't hate me. <laughs> Um, I mean, the fact that, I, of course, we've, we've had so much progress in special effects. So, you know, there's, there's a lot more flexibility that they have, but I, I just thought it was so fun and it was very true to the original. It, it veered away, I think a little bit from the book at one point, but the, for the most part, I, I, I did have one thing that I was like, meh. And that was, um, Daisy sounded like she was, you know, 28. But other than that. that is, I think part of that was, I had to look it up because I recognized the voice. It's Christian Channel. So. Gotcha. Who I, I love, but she yeah. sounded, usually she sounds like a child. And for some reason, he, she sounded like an adult. Yeah, that, that was the part that kind of had me going, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm with okay. you guys. I, I found it delightful so delightful mm -hmm. i am i will do a caveat for our listeners with kids um probably any kid maybe under the age of eight it will be scary and it will yes. be very yes. scary because the yes. special effects on the witches are pretty terrifying which we will talk about in a bit but um yes. it i believe it's scarier i think it's scarier than the original version um yeah. angelica I'd used to grand high witch used to scare the heck out of me so Me this is, and I mean, I think they both have their merits, but I may be on the Satomi side of the fence on this and saying that this is might be better than the original. Don't hate. Oh no! When you look at the fact <laughs> that in the original, um, half the witches are men. I don't know right. if anybody else noticed yes. that. <laughs> um, that says oh, a lot yes. about not just the improvements, but how far we've come. Mm. Like. Oh, definitely. Although I did, I, I did think they handled, um, uh, oh, I'm blanking on his name, the Bruno. chubby kid. Bruno, thank you. I think they handled his, um, uh, his, his eating obsession, his eating addiction a little bit better. Yeah. It's, 
it's interesting to see how that has shifted a little bit. Yeah. Like it, it's still present, but it's not this, you know, it, it's not a, you know, Augustus glute mm. kind of moment where it's very, you know, bad, you bad because you eat. It's like, no, this, you know, from- this kid just, he's got a thing about food. So I will say <laughs> um, quickly, because I should have mentioned it first, there may be some spoilers that we discussed. So if you haven't seen the original or you haven't read the the short story that this is based on and you haven't seen the movie yet we apologize but there's probably going to be some spoilers that we're going to have to show you in this especially when we're going to start talking about some of the special effects Um, i thought the casting was was great um you can tell that anne hathaway is just having a blast playing the grand high wish and that accent was all over the place and i didn't even mind a bit nope. right. what did you guys think christina how did you feel about the grand high witch as portrayed by miss anne hathaway in this he was brilliant and at first the accent adjustments bothered me a little bit and then it felt like it was intentional and she was just having so much fun with it and the the little details um that she puts in like the way she talks to her dress the way she you know that just that God, she's so funny and she just puts in so much heart. Agreed. Domi, what do you think? I, I love accent, her. Right. Oh, you know, it's well, I could hear where she was going with it because when you talk about Angelica Houston's high witch, um, she was very German. She was very she was, you know, really committed. Beaches of England. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Beaches of England, yeah. And when you talk Anne Hathaway, she was actually going to the original story, which is not of age. And, so that there was a little more of the ease going on when she would say, you know, good, which, you know, it, it wasn't a perfect Norwegian accent, but honestly, I didn't, I didn't care. It's the same thing. I didn't care because she reveled in being a bad, bad, bad lady. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As Christina says, when she's talked to the dress, I, I fell oh, out oh, on that yeah. part. Um, the special effect where she's like, wake up, yeah. telling the snake to yeah. wake up. Oh, and I that dress. Was, oh, her costumes. Her oh. costumes were, and I loved oh. all of the, what What I loved about this is it, for, for listeners at home, it's it's set in the 60s in, in America, um, which is, you know, it was, the, the original is set in Holland, I think is what it was. Uh, not the, not the movie, but the, the story itself. Uh-huh. I, I want to say you're right. Oh, yeah, no, Norway, and, Norway. Norway, that's right. right. And I think- and England. Yeah, and they kind of keep it, they keep it English. It's kind of an indeterminate European countryside mm-hmm. in the original movie. This is set in Alabama in the 60s uh, with a great diverse cast. So, so Anne Hathaway's costume just run the gamut of that Glamazon- 1960s madman esque. I mean, she had some amazing 60s wigs going on. Oh yeah. my so gosh, her hair! Phenomenal. Uh, <laughs> so brilliant. Every time she came out, it was like, I, "Who? Who is this costume designer? Who? Who is dressing this woman? Because it is glorious." And I have to say that that the costumes throughout were amazing, but for everyone, but the witches especially because i remember in the original a lot of the witches they were just kind of boxy suited not Mm -hmm. it the approach that they took for the witches that i liked is they were all gorgeous glamazon women when they were trying to hide that they were witches you know so you had a variety of hats a variety of wigs i mean we had one that the one that I remember in the grocery store, the first witch we meet in the grocery store was yes. very Marie Laveau. I yes. mean, it was and the turban. She had the and, turban oh. going on. And I mean, it was just so mm. I, I like the approach that they took to making these witches, these kind of glamazons, these beautiful, mm. because evil tends, evil can hide underneath beauty. And I think that's where they're going. I really appreciated that more than like the hook nose and homely right. and boxy woman that we saw yeah. in the original version. And what I actually found interesting too is in the original version, you had this glorious Angelica Houston looking like that statuesque goddess that she is. Mm-hmm. And then she took off not just her wig, but she took off her face to reveal <sighs> this, you know, this hideous. And in this one, 
you know, they take off their wigs and it's just, they've just got the bald heads and the markings and then the claws. Oh my God. Uh, Anne Hathaway's hands uh, and the whole bit that went with the hands with the little band-aids on them. And when she, she takes it and she just blows on it, it was such a wonderful, real moment that, was that just made me giggle. So much more comedy. Oh, yes. Yeah. In this version. That, I mean, we're not, we're not ragging on the original version, guys. We all grew up no. in the version. We loved it. Angelica Houston is phenomenal as the Grand High Witch. Love it. But there's so much more comedy in this one. Um, in terms of in terms of when the, the children get turned into the mice and all when the, the witches little ditty things I I full on guffawed when the witches started turning into the rats. Well, because it's like they had a little fart explosion. I can find and they're just popping so everywhere loud that I shot the chihuahua that was sleeping and he jumped <laughs> off the sofa and looked at me like what just happened <laughs> I think it's even in those little detail moments like when she first took her wig off I I was expecting the face to come off and I was like well that's not super scary but when she pulled <gasps> I was oh, just oh, that creeped oh, to me oh. out more well, that creeped me out yes. more than the whole Angelica. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, it was the, I was just like, Ugh. <laughs> I I agree with you. When she took off the wig, I was expecting the face pulled because that's mm-hmm. what we yeah. got in the original. And, but I don't think they needed it in this house oh, because no. they elongated the smile. And Oh, that, the, that was a great the, choice. The, the, and the forked tongue. Yep, the forked tongue for this stuff. And then the feet. And the so let's let's talk a little bit about the special effects of this one as compared to the original. Now, the original was in the 1990. 1990. 1990. Yeah, 1990. I was going to say late 80s, and then I, I like it's right on the cusp. So we've got those, you've got that level of, of special effects and a lot of the special effects in the original are all kind of practical effects yes like her pulling the her face off and having the whole entire prosthetic evil witch underneath it Mm -hmm. and then the box to toes and stuff so i think i feel benefited from the advancements in special effects what did you guys think so tell me let's see what did you think on that oh no doubt no doubt because you know things like when when the the kids become mice in the original one it's like oh and this is where we have the mice puppet you know it's it's you you just kind of and you just suspend your disbelief and i as a as a theater actress i am all down with suspending disbelief but we've we've now come to a place in um in this art form that when you're talking film we expect reality to a large extent. And so the fact that we're able to have talking mice, here come the talking mm-hmm. mice. And there's there's no, there's none of that, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I have to take a second and shift gears. It's like, no, they're there. The mice are talking. I'm down. Yeah, yeah. And again, the the mouth, the mouth with the forked tongue when she would open oh. her, you know, her joker grin yes. with the crocodile teeth. Yeah. I was like, that is awesome. Christine, what were you? It's you uh, for me, it was the arms. It was absolutely oh, the yes. arms. Because my son is actually double jointed and it oh, grosses me out unbelievably. <laughs> and to see it in such an extensive mode, I was just like, I couldn't look. I was just literally like, is it over? Because it just was so hideous, but brilliant. <laughs> It is. It's all those little bitty touches yes. with the special effects. Yes. I mean, I was talking to Dub a little bit earlier because he was he was watching it with Jenny, and uh, she's the only one with a toe. And uh, the oh, only one that toe, and it's toe. right smack dab in the middle of the feet, and that's why she has to wear the pointed shoe, especially when she pirouettes on it. Oh God, that was a genius. No, it's just it's those tiny, tiny little things that go into it that I think that, that are great um you know it's funny I, I read a review that you know they 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 kind of 
poo pooed the the single toe, and they're like, yeah, you know, you were wondering why she has a a single toe, and then we find out at the end because you know she needs something to get mouse trapped, and it's like, well, yes and no. She's the Grand High Witch, so she's going to have something different about her than everybody else, and that little that little subtle non inhuman, you know little little thing is just enough to give you the creeps it's just enough to because like no toes is like well you know maybe you had an accident you know maybe (laughs) maybe you were you were holding a a box of knives and dropped them and you know we don't judge that but you know to have that little thing that's that little detail is what made it made the a special thing yes and it, and it was perfectly manicured that's what made it so <laughs> brilliant yes. well if you had a single toe girl you know we would be there like every week like here give me crystal nail i wonder that if she only pays 20 percent for that <laughs> she has her assistant do it <laughs> What's the assistant's name? yeah i just yeah it's, and i agree with you i think they probably gave her that because you know, she's the Grand High Witch. We don't know how she became the Grand High Witch. We don't know if there's like Ryan Murphy version of you have to be the Supreme <laughs> or maybe she's the Grand High Witch because she has an extra toll that none of the other witches have. Right. I mean, is it an elected position? <laughs> Are you born into it? What is that? Did she wake up one morning and was like, you know what I need? I need an extra toe. I'm going to brew up an extra toe. This is how it is. I have the toe, so I get to be the Grand High Witch. <laughs> Oh, is that like having the conch shell? <laughs> I have the toe so I can talk. Well, now it's now it's gonna be the toe nose. <laughs> oh. oh, and I did enjoy that, you know, since we're talking special effects, how they were able to do those flaring nostrils. Oh yes. You know, and get yeah. that little very well, naturalistic. We get the real sense of that when she's sniffing around the stage. Mm-hmm for uh hero the hero yeah yes yeah yep agreed can, love I, I i'm i can't help it can can i can i shift gears sure. can we can Which we guy? talk octavia spencer for a second yes. Oh, yes oh yes shift baby i was oh. just <laughs> i was like we're mind melting girl it's happening it's happening christina's with us this is the yes. triumvirate of octavia spencer oh. right we are not worthy. We are not worthy. I, when she, I was, I was enjoying myself, but when she put on that record and started dancing, yeah. like cool. projectile tears instantly. Oh yeah. Oh. That She's- woman has so much heart in everything she does. And I feel like it couldn't have been played by anybody else. Like, you know, no. you think about like, you know, who could, who could have done that? But no, she is unbelievable. The way she shows her fear, her emotions. Oh, she's just genius. And the direction, the direction that they took the character with, as opposed to, say, in the original novel or in, in you know, in this reimagining where it's in America and in Alabama, it's and in the 60s, it's she just embodied what you'd expect of that kind of, you know, the knowledgeable kitchen witch kind of a woman yes you know who lays it out on the line to take care of her grandson and then you know she had but by default ends up with two more grandchildren (laughs) with daisy and bruno at and i mean not to spoiler guys but the original movie is not the ending of the book they they happy ending it up yes for for the original movie this is true to what happens in the book so that's all (laughs) <laughs> but, I mean, the little scenes that she had with the mice were good. I loved her scenes with Stanley Tucci. <gasps> yes. And then especially her, especially before the, uh, during the soup scene, her oh. scene with Anne Hathaway. That was just gorgeous oh. to watch. The two of them so sparring, good together. Sparring. I mean, really head to head, equal powerhouses. And you mm-hmm. did not know what was going to happen because everybody's got, you know, that's, that's that sign of, of just fantastic craftsmanship is when you've got, you know, you've got these lines and there's like a million things going on underneath. And this is like, this is like a 
you know, this is, you really could say this is just a bit of fluff, but they're bringing all of that, all of those layers to their performances. And it's just, ah, oh, it's a, it's a riot. It, the really casting is great. Christine, what were you yeah. saying, Christine? I was going to say, it's a little Gilmore Girl-esque, the way they were flat, popping back and forth with the, that dialogue between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Um, if that makes sense, like they just didn't let up and it was just brilliant. It was beautiful. And, you know, you just kept waiting for the next snappy comeback and the ne next, and, and it was just done so well. Exactly. There is definitely a little bit of that, like suspension of disbelief because, you know, people are yelling at each other and ain't nobody else in the restaurant being like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> well that was my it's, thing especially with the Anne Hathaway like they would do she would yes. get that Joker green going and she's standing in the middle of the lobby like, yes <laughs> nobody noticed that all of a sudden she looks like a Venus flytrap <laughs> <laughs> okay but you know it's it's the it, yeah it's that whole it's the world that we live in you know I what I'm curious about is if people who've never read the book or are not familiar with the original uh, fit with the 1990 film if watching this version um because i again I, I saw another review that was like they just didn't get it they just did they're like there is no story blah 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 and it's like well there there is it's it's very it's very clear but it's also a little bit of that that um so growing up i'm not going to say what decade but you know a while ago <laughs> A lot of a lot of uh, films, you just kind of took stuff for granted, like they wouldn't explain everything, and you'd be like, "Okay, all right, I'm down with that." Like the toe, you know, you just kind of roll with it. And I think there's a little bit of that going on in this film. I would be interested to see if if we plopped somebody down. So, listeners, I post this to you. If if, if any of you been listening, hit us up on Facebook or on the YouTube page in the comments section yes. if this is your first introduction to the witches by Roald Dahl if you've not seen the original movie and you've not read the book what did you think about it how did did you like it did you not like it did you keep up with it what are your thoughts because we've all seen the original and this read the book so <laughs> let's see what you have to say so make sure you hit us up um uh so tell me you had something about where they filmed it you had some interesting information about that why don't you yes that with us well, you know, what's funny is originally it was set in Norway and England, and then they reset it in Alabama, but they shot it in England. <laughs> and they actually, what, what had me looking was uh, when they get to the hotel and with the name that's way too long for me to remember, um, it is stunning. Oh, I mean, it is hotel. Absolutely beautiful. So I thought it was pre-existing. I was like, oh, well, you know, they got something for the, you know, for the outdoor shot and uh, looked it up and nope, they built that sucker. Uh, and I, it's the same, it's the same studio where um, Harry Potter was shot. No, oh, so it's Pineland. Wow. Isn't I? They, yeah, they do, <laughs> a lot, they do a lot of stuff at Pinewood. So yeah, the sets are gorgeous. I, that is interesting. So one thing I forgot to mention before, let's talk about now. What about that score? How about the music? The original theme is kind of iconic for the kids who grew up with that. But what do we think about the music? I thought the music was beautiful. Personally. I thought I thought it was beautiful. It wasn't as earwormy. Yeah. Yeah. So like you say it now and I'm like, I remember it being beautiful, but I couldn't hum it for you. Yeah, beautiful in the moment, but it fit what was happening perfectly. It doesn't necessarily have to be kind of earwormy, I guess. Mm -mm. No, but it's I, supposed to support. Yeah, I agree. I think it was they. It was perfect in the moments, and now I actually, when I get done here, I want to see if they've already got the soundtrack out and just listen to it without the soundtrack because you know you can really pick out a good one if you can start to see the parts based on what you're hearing with the music. Yep. So yeah. Film scoring is a, that's an art form in itself. I actually just scored my first short film over the weekend for, for a 48 hour, uh, 48 hour film festival. Very nice. That, that one was sight unseen though. So gonna, I, I learned real quick. I'm gonna, let's jump back to casting again really quickly. Um, first though, let's talk about Stanley Tucci. 
So you have somebody as venerated as Dan Itucci. He doesn't do a lot, but he's really funny in the short moments that he's in in there. So how do we feel about Stanley Tucci? Comedic genius or anybody anybody look at their first meeting and go, oh, I'm getting shades of Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> no, I, w- I was concerned by who they were going to cast uh, because I-, I do think Rowan Atkins is a genius um, and he's so funny and oh, so good. Like, so good. There were those moments of subtle humor where he just pulls it off brilliantly. And I think Rowan would have been very proud of him stepping into that character because he just, oh, like the purse and the mice yes. and, and how she handles that oh, and his yeah. responses. Oh, why would I be carrying a, purse, a mouse in my purse? Yeah. And he just looks at her and goes, Let's get you to our finest dance. <laughs> right, right. Oh, and when he corrects, when he corrects the Grand High Witch, <gasps> we would man. exterminate to rats. Because <laughs> she calls them brats. And it's yes. just, he's just so, because he does it with such earnest, but yet you know that he's just really playing that comedic edge to it. And yes. then, then the whole scene when all of the, the the witches are turning into rats and he just gets bombarded. Yes. And and where he gets bit, oh God right. help me. <laughs> We're just gonna say not say exactly where it is, but I think all of you watching can see our faces and you've connected the dots. And he's very expressive about it. Yes. Yes. So let's do a little hypothesizing. I was a little iffy when I heard that Anne Hathaway was was going to play the Grand High Witch. Now, I love Anne Hathaway. That's not impugning her. I just wasn't sure if she was going to be able to live up to Angelica Houston's bravado and brilliance in the role. Right. I think she did. I really do. But who else do we think could have handled this? I know, Satomi, you said you had a, you've known, you got like a, you read about where some of the other actresses that were considered. I've actually got a list if you want to hear Ooh, it. Let's hear it. Let's yes. hear some of them. Curious. Some of the names considered for the Grand High Witch. <laughs> um, some of them surprising. Jennifer Lopez, Uma Thurman, I can see that. Charlize one. Theron, Kira Knightley, Natalie Portman, Rachel Weisz, Catherine Zeta Jones, Selma Hayek, and Kate Beckinsale. There's some I could agree on, some that I couldn't. I'm with you on that. Um, I do, I'm with you on that. see Jennifer Lopez as the Grand High Witch? You do or you I don't? I do not. I do not. <laughs> no. um, I, go ahead, Christina. What do you think? I could see Nicole Kidman in that role. Oh, yeah. Like, she's got that, that flair. And, uh, you know, but some of the ones that you read off, I'm just, I'm surprised. They would not be anybody yeah. I would have picked. Yeah. My thing was Charlize I mean, Throne, maybe, but she's already played that, that when she played the Eva Queen and yeah, Snow White and the Huntsman or whatever that film was. Yep. Um, I could maybe oh. see Catherine Zeta Jones. Yes, I could see her doing it. I'm not sure she would have had to. Uh, she would have been able to do the the comedy, the level of comedy that Anne Hathaway brings to the character. Because she brings that glamour, but also the comedy that's that's kind of needed. Um, Dub told me earlier that he kind of wanted Carol Channing to come back to life. <laughs> that's because Dub is not aware of what Grand High Witch is supposed to be. He's never seen either one no, of them. No. Literally, he was watching. Re- listeners, you're going to love this. He was watching it with a little like sort of watching with Jenny earlier when I was on the phone with him. And all his comment to me was, there's a lot of snakes in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and the snakes are fantastic so good they They're are so good. you know i i honestly when i heard Anne hathaway was going to be playing it i i had quite a glimmer of hope just because of the work that she did in um alice in wonderland mm-hmm. because she was so funny now the the character is 180 degrees as far as uh you know grandeur and bravado but the fact that she she was loose enough to really go there uh, with the, what is it the the white queen or I forget what her yeah, character name is but queen. yeah yes um kind of you know it, it it was promising it was it was very promising so 
she actually exceeded my expectations. Once I saw the trailer, I was like, she gonna be good. <laughs> Once I saw the trailer, I was like, I'm down. I am down for this. Well, and I don't know if you guys felt it, but when I was watching her, mm-hmm. you can tell that she is just having the best time being this over the top, goofy, evil, glamour, crazy, kooky character. I mean, you can just tell that she's just having, like in her posture with stuff, like when she goes, reaches behind her to pull out these six bars of chocolate. I mean, it's such a a measured moment in her movement. Anyway, so she's just having a blast and you get the impression that everybody that was involved in this was just having a ton of fun. Yes. Fun. And I think just that fun, yeah. translates to the enjoyment that the audience has of it. Yeah. So it was very good. It felt like everybody just had permission. You know, yeah. it was like it was it was it was like Zemeckis was like, go play. Go play, kids. Have fun. I think he was a good choice to direct it because he's got that he's got that directing style where he kind of sets you into this alternate world and where goofy is mm-hmm. okay you know i mean and we're talking who frames roger rabbit we're talking back to the future mm-hmm. i mean it's that all that kind of it's it's the world you live in but it's that periphery here's a little bit skewed yeah. kind of world mm-hmm. maybe this could happen it's it's the parallel world that's just like one or two <laughs> frames off yeah you know I can we can we talk? I I rewatched the old one in preparation for this. I think Christine and we're gonna do that. I too, did. Right? I did. So now, did did you guys? Did it tickle you guys to see some of these faces, um, like the the chef that ends up with one of the mice in his pants? Did you guys rec- recognize him? I couldn't place is, him, and I was gonna look. Is the him gentleman up. who plays Mr. Bates? On Downton Abbey. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. And of course, you know, we've got Mr. Bean, yes. Rowan Atkinson. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Bill Patterson, who is for, for you Whovians out there. Yep. Um, he plays uh, Gracewell in the, um, the, the one with Winston Churchill, the episode yep. with Winston Churchill. Like at the minute I heard he started talking, I was like, I know him. Who are you? <laughs> I know that accent. I know that Paisley. Where is he from? <laughs> so it's her, super fun to her see. Her assistant um, is Jane Horrocks, who did, I don't know, this is probably an obscure, obscure film, but a, a play in a movie called The Rise and Fall of Little Voice. Um, she's actually yes. She can do Judy Garland, Marlena Dietrich, Marilyn Monroe. She's just, if you watch Little Voice, it's, it's she does she does all of these and there are uh, most of them are pretty spot on like if you close your eyes you would think you were listening to judy R. you would think oh, so wow. she plays the assistant to the grand high witch in that other word one so i think overall let's let's rate this shall we should we rate it um let's rate the original because we've all seen the original and then let's rate this one so how do we scale of you know a b like we usually do what is our rating for the original the witches so Tommy, how do you feel? Do you want don't, me to go to Christina? Don't start with me. Don't start with me. Don't, okay, don't. Christina, what's your rating for the original witches? So um when I I'm gonna be really honest and tell you when I first saw it, I thought it was a B. I saw it in the theater a couple of times with my friends. Um, but now um I'm gonna have to say it's dropped a little bit to a C. It has the page. Right. It's it's dateable. I mean but Angelica will always be Angelica and Rowan Atkins will always have his one-liners yeah. uh, like when the, the mouse goes up the leg and he's like, there's nothing much in there talking about the chef's riches. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, graphics and CGI and everything has gone, come so far. And I think that makes a huge difference in the storytelling. Okay. So tell me original. Um, so original, I, when I, first the very first time I saw it I it was not my cup of tea um so it was sitting more like a b minus because it was watchable mm-hmm. it, it was just kind of like okay um I think I was a little old for it when it when it came out and then and re-watching it it's it, it's sitting solidly at a b 
for me. It's not quite as um, the through line is not quite as strong. Um, whereas the film, this film is more like, like, I would say a B plus, A minus. I can't go all the way just because it's not a life-changing film. And it's not like, oh my God, it's not a hocus pocus. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it is delightful. And um, the performances are wonderful. And I'm not mad. I smell children. <laughs> Winnie. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward. We are eventually going to do hocus pocus, y'all. Yeah, talked about it. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I I enjoyed it. I don't want my two hours back. And um, you know, were were I to have the opportunity, I yeah, I'd watch it Christine, again. I'm gonna go back to you for what was your grade on the current one? I would say B plus, absolutely. Um, you know, I think it was fun, and I'm gonna try to get Mr. Mustache Man to comment on this because he has never read the book. He's never seen the original, so he watched it with me. Good the first time and then he went to bed um <laughs> but uh you know i i think that it it the cgi was brilliant chris rock did such a great chris job rock and, and that, guys we didn't we didn't yeah. mention that <laughs> and 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 just yeah. the light like you know chris rock has one of those voices that you can hear the humor and i think that just elevates it yeah. and he did such a good job so i'd say a, a b plus easily I am kind of with you guys on both of them. I'm going to go that the original is B. Um, I'm mainly going to say that it's a B because of Angelica Houston's amazing performances. By Kept it out, which yeah. I'm a lot like, I think, I, I mean, I, I remember watching it and kind of enjoying it, but it wasn't something I revisited it over and over and over and over again as a kid. I'm going to go with a B plus on this one too, just because I found it so delightful. And I went in afraid that it was going to be a disaster mm -hmm. and it was just a delight. And, and in, don't hate me listeners. I think this might be a case of where the remake is better than the original. Dun, dun, dun. I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm going to put it out there. You guys can fight me on Facebook later. So <laughs> that I think is a wrap. So let's turn it over to Mr. Tommy. So Tommy, do you have something to tell us about Broadway Heart? Yes, I can tell you about our charity, Broadway Hearts. We bring music to kids all across the country who are in hospitals and their families. And we do all kinds of interactive visits with them, sing-alongs, Broadway bingo. We create bespoke videos for the kids who request them. We've got a scholarship program. You can check us out on broadwayhearts.org. Uh, it's a really good cause. And if you've got a children's hospital in your area that would be interested in having some Broadway folks Come online and hang out with the kids. Let us know. Broad, uh, info at broadwayhearts.org. Awesome. And so thank you guys for coming and joining us. And thank, thank you, Satomi and Christina, for joining me and talking Yay. about the witches today. Thank you, Courtney. Having our girls' day as we talk about the witches. Okay. You can yeah. find us at iHeart just about anywhere that you can imagine. Um, we don't have any smoke signals or big billboards, but you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and check out our YouTube channel and make sure that you're liking and subscribing all that fun stuff, especially the YouTube channel because you get all of you like and subscribe. You get all the video no notifications whenever we put up like supplementals like this one because this isn't a regular show. It was just we want to throw one together for you because we know all of you are out there going to watch the movie. Um, we have a Patreon as well. I don't know all the details about that, so Double probably yell at me later. But check out our Patreon, and then we all- It's brand new. Brand, brand new. Um, we'll talk to you on the Facebook page, so come and annoy us if you want to. That's what we like, and you'll read us. So, so I think I hit everything good. Yay! So we'll just Yay! I'm Miss Geeky Page, and thank you for joining us. And we have our Miss Satomi, what is it? Satomi Hoffman, hey, hey, hey. And Christina. Hey, 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 and remember guys, keep on geeking on. You have been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.